All right, what's going on again, everybody? This is Alex with the second part of our Hour of Devastation Limited set review. These are the black and the red cards. If you haven't already, go check out the white and the blue cards, and eventually the rest of the cards, the green, the gold artifact lands, and those oh-so-pretty yet undecipherable invocations. But... As always, we are operating on a four-point scale. The ones are the cards you should never ever play. They are trash. Twos are your filler cards, your generic creatures and spells. Threes are your more premium creatures and removal type spells. And the fours are the absolute bombs that will pull you into a color and make you go, I'm going to play this Planeswalker and win games with it. Simple stuff. Let's get kicked off really quickly with a Cursed Horde. This is a three and a black zombie, uncommon three, three. And you can pay one and a black to give a target attacking zombie indestructible until the end of turn. Uh, that attacking clause kind of sucks. There's a couple more like this. Uh, this is, this is bad, like it's almost bad filler. And every once in a while that uh, zombie, you know, that, that, that indestructible clause will actually matter. But as it is, it's just kind of crappy filler. So 2.25 for me, not impressive at all. Now, his friend though, the Amit Eternal, two and a black creature, zombie crocodile demon, because three creature types is not enough for this guy. He has to have all of them. He is a rare at 5-5 five five with afflict, which means whenever he is attack, attacks and blocks, target the defending player loses X number of life, which is a three in this case. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, so it's any spell, creature, planeswalker, artifact, enchantment, whatever, uh, put a minus one, minus one counter on Emmet Eternal. Now, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, remove all minus one, minus one counters from it. That's pretty hot. This thing's big, too. Uh, yeah, three mana five fives, I don't care what drawback it is. You can get around that somehow, as long as you know what you're doing. I give this guy a solid three. Next up, Apocalypse Demon. For black, black, creature, demon, rare, star, star, power. Has flying, and its power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your graveyard. So that's all cards, spells, creatures, what have you. At the end of your upkeep, tap Apocalypse Demon unless you sacrifice another creature. This thing sucks. Like, flat out sucks. I, this is just, yeah, it's potentially big if you constantly are filling your graveyard with cyclers, you know, and removal spells and things like that. But if you don't have the creatures to keep this thing in play, what good is it doing, honestly? Like, it just, no. Two. Like, if you have the deck for it, maybe some token generators or something. But other than that, this card is bad. And I might be wrong about this one, but this feels bad. Apocalypse even gets a two. Next. We've got Bane Whip Punisher. Two and a black gets you a human warrior at uncommon 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature, and you can pay a black and sacrifice a Bane Whip Punisher. Destroy target creature that has a minus one, minus one counter on it. That's pretty sick. That's kind of like a slightly more expensive evoked Shriek Maw. And I like Shriek Maw, so this card looks pretty good to me. Uh, I gave Bane Whip here a 2.5. There's lots of cards in both Hour of Devastation and Amon Ket that put minus one, minus one counters on your opponent's creatures. So, you tell me, guys. Pretty good, I think. Next, we've got Bantu's Last Reckoning. This one was one of the first cards in the set actually spoiled. The one black, black sorcery at rare. Destroy all creatures. Lands you control don't untap during your next untap step. Woo hoo 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 hoo! Me gusta. Me gusta. Mucho. God, this card's insane. Uh, in limited, this is an this is just a board wipe, straight up. You know, the the trick with playing cards like this is that you know once it gets to the mid game where you do want to fire the pull trigger on this one, you want to make sure that you probably won't want to fire off any more spells if you have land on tap because that locks out all of your mana. So while this only costs three mana, it might end up costing you more mana. In the longer and you know on the on the subsequent turns and that can be pretty dicey so careful about how you use this one but it is super powerful and i am fully predicting to see this see play in modern as a substitute for damnation in a lot of decks i'm hoping because i like this card a lot and the art is insanely cool next we've got oh yeah it's a three uh, carrion Screecher. Three and a black, three, one. Zombie bird flying. Uh, this is like uh, the carrion uh, bird from 
I don't want to get that. It was basically a 3 2 Delver uh, for one black mana if a creature died this turn. So this card's a little bit worse than that, obviously, but still pretty darn good. It's a 3 1 flyer for four, and that's perfectly reasonable stats. I gave it a 2.5 because evasive flyers limited are always good. So I like this guy a lot, and the art's pretty cool, too. Next up, we've got Doomfall. Uh, for a two and a black, you get a sorcery that lets you choose one. Target opponent exiles a creature he or she controls. Or, target opponent reveals his or her hand. You may choose a non-land card from it and exile that card. So again, these modal spells are pretty sweet. Unfortunately, the choose on your opponent's part when it comes to exiling their own creature is a bit tricky because you kind of have to maneuver the board to a position where it's the creature that you want to have removed and that's kind of a trick especially limited when boards can get relatively clogged up so i can see playing this just fine in some decks that have a lot of removal um as it stands though it's just a two for me unfortunately um you know thought sees like effects like this um typically aren't great in limited so Cast it as your, at your you know, if, you, if there's a card in your opponent's deck that you know you have to get rid of or they're relying on one big guy that's on the board to take you out, then there's some application there. But other than that, it's just not very good if you ask me. Solitude. Next up, we've got the Dream Stealer. Two and a black gets you a rare human wizard, one, two with menace. And whenever it deals common edge to a player, that player discards that many cards and you can eternalize it for four black black. So you go from one card discarded to four. That's pretty insane. Um... Problem being is that that's, a again, a heavy mana investment. And yes, the menace does give it some upside, so I'm inclined to say this is a little bit better than a 2.25, but maybe not a 2.5. It's somewhere in there, and again, I am completely open to the fact that I could be 100% wrong on Eternalize being really good or really bad. We will have to see about that once the format actually flushes itself out. This card could be insane. It could just be trash. Who knows? Next up. Grizzly Survivor, two and a black gets you a common Minotaur Warrior, two, three, whenever you cycle or discard a card, there's that text again we were looking for. It gets plus two, zero until the end of turn. And that's pretty solid. Grizzly Survivor, I get a 2.25. I, you know, these creatures that get these buffs like this that require you to actively enable other cards are always great, but in a vacuum, that's kind of how I'm looking at this card. It's not that great. The body isn't stellar for its power and toughness. Um, but other than that, it's decent filler. And if you can get some you know, decent tricks in with this thing by discarding your cycling, all the better. But as it stands, 2.25 for me, nothing fancy. Next up, we've got our Black Hour. We have the Hour of Glory. And this is some sick art showing the Scorpion God uh, <laughs> killing Ronas. <laughs> all the gods die. The gods all die. It's just that simple. Um, Hour of Glory costs three and a black for an instant at rare. Exile target creature. If that creature is a god, or was a god, I should say, <laughs> um, its control reveals his or her hand and exiles all cards from it with the same name as that card, or as that creature. Unfortunately, this isn't like Deicide, which actually searched the entire library, but that only got enchantments, and if they were gods, then you got the full effect. But... This card is still pretty sweet. Um, once we see rotation, I imagine this card is going to see a lot of play just because it's instant speed removal, and that's pretty good. And the gods that we'll get to eventually in the gold section are pretty damn powerful, and exiling them is one of the surefire ways to deal with them permanently. So we'll get to them in a little bit, but as our glory stands, I gave it a three. This is a hell of a removal spell, and I expect to see this. I see a lot of play in the next couple months. Next up, we've got Kendra Eternal, one in a black 2-2, two, two, common zombie Jekyll warrior. Afflict one. It's a bear with upside. It gets a two for me. <laughs> um, mostly because I don't imagine that this is going to get through more than once. You might get a chip shot here and there for two damage, but they might just block it eventually and trade off, and you'll get your one point of damage in. And to me, that's just not a, enough of a, of a impact on the board and the game itself. So it might be a little bit better if there's an aggressive black deck somewhere in the format, but I'm not convinced. It's just generic bad flow for me. Next up, we have Lethal Sting. Two and a black for a sorcery at common as an additional cost to cast Lethal Sting. Put a minus one, minus one counter on a creature you control, enabling a lot of creatures to get stronger that we saw in Amonkhet and we'll see again here in Hour of Devastation. Destroy target creature. I'm going to rant here for a minute. 
I really don't understand what Wizard's fear is for having instant speed removal. I guess it is just it's going to be just regulated to rare level removal, which is fine. But I mean, Doomblade, go for the throat. Bile Blight. I mean, these are all really good cards. Ultimate Price, uh, Victim of the Night. Like, where is the cheap? Uh, you know, common and uncommon, unconditional removal. Like, I just I just don't get it. Why are we being forced to pay three mana at sorcery speed, you know, with Ruinous Path or Never to Return, and then we have to pay four mana for, a, a, for an instant speed removal spell? Like, we need cheap interactive spells that are unconditional removal, that are not damage-based, like Lightning Strike, like a Braid, like we'll see in red here in a minute. But... I, don't, I just don't get it. What's so wrong with instant speed removal? What's so wrong with, wrong with instant speed anything? I get it. Sometimes, you know, there's a feel bad moment where your opponent just doesn't see something and they're like, it's an onboard trick and they're like, oh, gotcha, instant speed trick on the board and you missed it because you're a bad player. Whatever it is, like, that sucks. And, you know, when you catch your opponent like that, it's a feel good moment for you and it's a learning experience for them. So they shouldn't think that, like, oh, I'm a bad player, I didn't see that. Oh, I just didn't see it. Next time I will. I learned from that experience. So, come on, Wizards. Throw us a bone. Give us some more instant speed effects. That's all I'm asking for here. Um, Lethal Sting, though, I give it a 2.5. You know, unconditional removal in limited is really good, even if it's sorcery speed. So, take it as you will. 2.5 for me. Next up, we've got the Liliana. She's dead. Well, we don't know if they're actually dying here, but this is Liliana's defeat. A uh, single black man gets you a sorcery to destroy target black creature or black planeswalker. If that permanent was a Liliana planeswalker, her controller loses three life. I love how it indicates her controller. Like, it's that's just so neat that they're talking about Liliana being... I mean, the control part is, you know, because that's how magic works, but it's just kind of neat that her controller loses the life. Like, that's just like a neat way to phrase that. I think it's cool. Um, again, sideboard this if you're playing against... And bring it in if you're playing against another black deck... Um, there is the potential to actually get this trigger off to gain the life if they do have um, Liliana Death's Majesty, which, again, that's going to happen in like 0.1% of your games, which is fine, but whatever. It's still a good removal spell. Um, you know, again, targeted black removal is at a premium in a lot of cases, and so you'll take it where you can get it. So sideboard and do what you can with it. Next up, Lurching Rot beast and i would hate to see what this thing looked like before it was a rot beast because this thing is grody three and a black gets you a zombie beast at common it's a four two that cycles neat <laughs> 2.25 um decent stats compared to its converted mana cost and it has cycling so that's always fun so there you go decent filler next marauding bone slasher bone slasher is ready Two and a black gets you a 3-3 zombie minotaur that can't block unless you control another zombie. That might as well just be blank text right there because if you're playing black, the possibility of you controlling other zombies is practically guaranteed. So this is a 3-3 three, three for 3 in my opinion. And it's pretty good at that point, but if your opponent's you know picking off your creature just you know, selectively and going after the zombies and not this guy... Small problem there, so it's pretty good filler. You just need to be sure that you are you know, have the support for it. Pretty cool, though. Next up, we have probably one of the sickest arts in this whole set. Very, very uh, Dark Souls-esque, if you ask me. Uh, this is Merciless Eternal. Tuna Black into a zombie cleric at uncommon. 2-2, two, two, afflict 2, so it loses 2 life. Your opponent loses 2 life if it's blocked. And you can pay 2 a black and discard a card to give it plus 2, plus 2 until the end of turn. So again, here's that punish mechanic. Do you block it, lose the two, or do you leave it unblocked and then potentially blow you out by pumping in six mana, ditching two cards, and buffing other creatures on the board somehow? Like, that, that, that's, a, that's a real, real danger here. Or if you even block it and they're like, okay, cool, I'll pitch a card, pay some mana, and kill your guy, and you lost two life too? Nuts. Merciless Eternal, I give it a 2.25. It's a pretty steep cost to get this thing going. But if it's unchecked, wow. This card's really cool, I think. Next up, we've got the Moaning Wall. Two and a black for a zombie wall at common. Defender cycling to zero five. I can't see a reason to play this card ever. 
personally. Uh, if you are playing some kind of dirtly control deck, unlimited or drafts, sure. But other than that, nope. Bad filler is bad. Next, we've got Razaketh, the Foul Blooded. This is one of the last demon lords that Liliana has sold her soul to. And I think after Razaketh goes down, that's only one left. And that's at that point, Liliana is free from her curse and can just go about her business and do whatever the hell she wants. Razaketh is a five black, black, black legendary creature demon at Mythic 8 8 Flying Trample, and you can pay two life, sack a creature, and search your library for a card and put it into your hand and shuffle your library. Nice. Who doesn't love tutors on a stick? Awesome. Problem being, this guy costs a million mana. Now, if you can ramp this thing out somehow, by all means, go crazy with Razzle Kev here. Um, if he was any cheaper, you know, Grizzlebrand um, is cheated into play quite often. And, you know, he's this guy is on the level in terms of power, just raw stats as Grizzlebrand. Not as good as Grizzlebrand, obviously, but still plenty big. Um, if you can ramp this guy out, you're in much better shape. But the 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 casting cost is CMC it really hurts Razzle Kev here. Um, 2.25 for me, it's good, it's powerful, but you got to jump through a big old hoop to get it to, to make it worth it. So probably this one in the in your box, if you ask me. Let's move right along. We've got Raza Kets right. Three black, black for a sorcery. Search your library for a card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Cycling for a black. So this is Diabolic Tutor, which we've seen before at four. CMC, two and two black, and you just tag on extra black and give it cycling now. That's reasonable. I can see you playing this unlimited if you have like a really sweet bomb, you know, a creature or a planeswalker or a removal spell, or just something that'll really, you know, tip the game in your favor. I can see making an excuse for playing this. Um, but again, when you're playing in limited, you typically want to be affecting the board every turn and taking a whole turn off to cast this to effectively draw a card. Eh, that's where I have a problem with this. So I give it a two. Unless you've just got the bees knees in your deck and you're just ready to kill, win the next win on the next turn as soon as you don't tap. I don't know though. Could be better than I think it is. Next up, Ruin Rat. One in a black for a rat. At common, one one death touch, and when it dies, you can exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. I like that it says target card, so you can go after those eternal cards or the deserts in their graveyard, so that you can kind of shut off their their um, their you know benefits or getting out of out of that their synergies essentially. So. It's, it's not bad. Like, I liked, oh, uh, shoot, the 1-1 one, one Black Rat from Innistrad, uh, Plague Rat, Morbid Rat, Dead Rat, whatever it was called. S same kind of concept here, but it only costs one mana. But this one's not very good. I don't, I don't like it all, much, all that much either. This is just a two for me. Bad filler. Small upside when you need it, possibly. Next up, Scrounger of Souls. Four and a Black for a Horror at Common. Three, four with Lifelink. Yell for help, and that may answer. Mm -hmm. Creepy. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on in this art. It is absolutely weird. It's got like two legs and two like big old long leggy arm things, and two more things coming out of its head that I guess are like more arms. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> um, that being said, I do like Scrounger of Souls. 3-4 of the lifelink is nothing to scoff at. And at 5 mana, that's not terrible. Those are decent stats at a decent CMC. Decent filler. 2.25 for me. I like this card a little bit. And the art's really freaky. So, there you go. Next up. Oh, Torment of Hailfire. X, black, black sorcery at rare. Repeat the following process X times. Each player loses 3, or opponent, I should say loses three life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. There is a point in the late game where you're both top decking and the boards may be a little bit clogged up, two or three creatures are left over, and you just throw all of your mana into this. Like, and we're talking late game here. So we're talking that X is for five. I, I think at X equals four. I think you're getting your best return because at that point you probably are stripping them of a majority of their resources. But late uh, late into the game, if the board state has really clogged up and things have just gotten stalled out completely and you're both top decking trying to find that last creature to kill them, this is your win con right here. This card is nuts. Um, I, I gave Reign of Health. Uh, I, oh, Torment of Health. Yeah, this is a solid three for me. This card is absolutely bonkers. 
Um, just because your opponent has the ability to choose what they're they're discarding or sacrificing, I knock the score a little bit, but in the right situation, this will flat out end the game. And that's really, really cool. Also cards that end the game eventually. Torment of Scarabs. Three and a black for an enchantment or a curse at uncommon. Enchants a player. At the end of enchanted player's upkeep, that player loses three life unless he or she sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. Now, the key here is the fact that this is happening on upkeep, where the discard happens, when they're making their decision. There will be a point where they are out of cards in hand, or they are holding onto lands that they need to make you know, further plays down the line, and they haven't drawn a card yet. And they're just like, well, I've got a few blockers left, I have a card in my hand, and I don't know what's on top of my library. That's a rough spot to make. So they might just say, all right, I'll just lose three life then, and that's fine. And eventually, it'll get to the point where, if you're, especially if you're in black, playing a more removal-heavy deck, you know, with all of the remo with all of the other pieces of removal, the death touch creatures that are in here, and just lots of combat tricks and things like that, this will end the game eventually. I, I firmly believe that. I have some aspirations of putting this in some modern decks that are very attrition-based, like Death Cloud and Jund, possibly. Um, this is a scary card that will eventually put your opponent or yourself, if it's, if it's cast on you, in a real bind, and you need to be ready to kind of counteract this and win the game quickly before this gets out of control. I gave this a three. I really like this card a lot. The flavor is just mm, perfect. Next up, Torment of Venom. Two black, black, instant at common. Put three minus, 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 minus counters on target creature. Its opponent loses three life unless he or she sacrifices another non-land permanent or discards a card. Little more narrow. Um, typically, what you're wanting, the, 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 the really text that matters on this card are the minus one, minus one counters. You know, they declare a block. You declare a block and they're attacking or whatever it is and you shrink their guy down and kill it. That's where this actually comes into play. The bolt effect on it is pretty irrelevant. If they, you know, kill their creature and worry about that and then what are they going to do with the rest of the, of the effect on the card, that's up to them. Treat this simply as a removal spell and I think you'll be a lot happier than trying to, you know, finagle your way to get, you know, added value out of it. That's just my opinion of it. But as it stands, though, this is a 2.25 for me. It's pretty good solid removal. Next up, we have Vile Manifestation. One of the black gets you a creature horror at uncommon, 0 4, but it gets plus 1 plus 0 for each card that is cycling in your graveyard, and it cycles itself for 2 mana. Now, guys, what colors do the best cycling cards exist in? Blue. And black. Frankly, every color in this set has some good cycling in it. So I can see this thing getting out of control huge. Like we're talking as soon as this thing hits like two four, your money's already well invested into it. Three, four, five and beyond, you have gotten a return on this thing like nobody's business. And as long as you've built your deck properly, probably better off in draft just because of the way that the it requires a certain type of card to play well with. That's what you're looking for here, but this card is really powerful in the right deck. 2.25 for me, and then scales exponentially when it's in the right deck for it. Next, we have Without Weakness. One in a black instant un or common that cycles for two and gives a creature you control indestructible until the end of turn. Sure, whatever. Um, there are enough minus one, minus one counters running around to make this card possibly ops, you know, completely useless because... Indestructible does not prevent a removal by toughness hitting zero. So if they were to cast, for instance, Torment of, a Torrent of Venom on a creature that you cast without weakness on, whoops. There you go. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this card, to be completely honest. Even the cycling doesn't save it for me to be, if I'm being, you know, completely forthcoming. Uh, I give it a two. This is pretty crappy filler, if you ask me. Next up, we've got Wretched Camel. Come on, tribal, uh, camel zombie, tribal, 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 tribal camels. Anybody? Am I the only one that wants this? One of the black zombie camel at common. Two one. When it dies, if you control a desert or a desert is in your graveyard, target player discards a card. It's a bear with minor upside and not really good upside either. This is a two for me. Not very good at all. All right, those are the black cards. Let's move right along. 
to the red cards. And there's some fun ones in here. I like the red cards a lot in this set. All right. First up on the list, we've got a braid. And this probably means something I meant to look it up before I started recording this, but here's a braid. Uh, one in red instant. Choose one to deal three damage to a creature or destroy target artifact. Pretty cool. I, again, like versatile spells like this. Um, it's a 2.5-ish for me. There will be some games where the damage can't actually kill anything. And unfortunately, it can't go to the face, which would probably make this even better. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a 2.5. It's good removal. And in the case where your opponent has, you know, one of the monuments from um, Amonkhet, or if they have, you know, Oracle's Vaults or something like that, I could see an argument for really, you know, needing the other effect on this, which is pl plenty good. You know, split cards are fantastic, so do with what you will. Uh, just a 2.5 for me, though. Next up is Blur of Blades. One in a red instant common. Put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature, and Blur of Blades deals two damage to that creature's controller. This card sucks. Just straight up sucks, if you ask me. <laughs> there aren't enough cards that really care about the minus one, minus one theme in red. I, I just really don't see the point of... Th this is just bad. I mean, a shock for two mana and a minus, minus one counter? No. Pass. Two... I almost give it a one, but you might find some utility for it every once in a while. But I wouldn't be, you know, really stretching to play this card. Next, we've got Burning Fist Monitor. One in a red gets you a 2-1 Minotaur Wizard at Uncommon with First Strike. Pay one in a red, discard a card, and it gets plus two, plus zero at the end of the turn. This guy's insane! The First Strike alone will let you trade up against most creatures. The bonus to get on this thing makes it even better. Like it will, it can, it can outclass on its own a lot of the bigger creatures in the format, and that's insane. If you have the deck to build around, you know, discarding cards and you know just have mana left over, this card will do some serious damage that I will not feel happy about blocking this thing ever. Uh, Two point five for me. This card's crazy good. I like it a lot. Next, we've got Chandra's Defeat. She's not all the planes lock, all the Gatewatch are just being destroyed, and fire just wasn't a good enough trick. One mana, one red mana, instant, deals five damage to target red creature or red planeswalker. If that permanent is a Chandra planeswalker, you may discard a card and draw a card. Rummaging is a thing, I guess. Um, again, sideboard this in if you're playing against other red decks, and of course, the Chandra Claws on here will never actually come up unlimited, so. It might as well just be a five mana, you know, instant speed spell, whatever. Or five damage instant speed spell. Fine. Uh, next up, Chaos Maw. Five red red Hellion at rare, six six. When it enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to each other creature. Seven mana is a lot to get to in limited. Now, I can see this being, you know, you attack, there's some trades, there's some damage dealt, and you're like, all right, that's fine. Chaos Maw, wipe the board, you know. If that's what you're gonna do, that's what you're gonna do. Um, you can get cute and combo this with Skull, Soul Scar Mage. There's something. Uh, but as it stands up, this is a two for me. It's just a really big investment for possibly not a lot of payoff here. It's just a big dumb guy. Next up, we've got Crash Through. A single red mana gets you a sorcery that gives your creatures you control trample until the end of turn and you draw a card. This card comes with a caveat because you just can't slap it in any red deck, unfortunately. And I'll tell you why. Simply because a lot of the red cards, the creatures in particular, do not have the power to really take advantage of trample like green creatures typically do. You know, your four fives, your six sixes. Red just doesn't have that on the low end, and that's a problem. In the red white aggressive deck that we've seen in Limited, Again, same problem. A lot of the creatures there just don't have the power to really punish people for blocking and trample being a thing. It's not worth it. If you're in red-green, though, this card shines like a mother. And I can see this being a thing, you know. To give all creatures trample for one red mana and draw a card, you have my attention at that point. So, 
in the right limited deck, whether it's draft or sealed, this card can be absolutely insane, but you just can't throw it in any red deck. That's the biggest problem here. So it's a two for me, unless you've got it in that green red deck, and then you might have something. Moving on to Defiant Ke Kenra. God, I just don't like that word. One in a red gets you a 2-2 two, two Jekyll Warrior at common. Two. Moving on. <laughs> We've got Earthshaker Kenra. A much better two-mana Kenra, actually. Uh, it's, a, it's a one in a red for a Jekyll Warrior at rare. 2-1 with haste. When it enters the battlefield, target creature with power less than or equal to it can't block this turn, so it will not be blocked by other bears. You can... You can internalize it by paying for red red and doing the same effect. So that's pretty insane here. So again, I don't know how good internalize will be on the spectrum, you know, in terms of playability, but this thing's kind of nuts. A six mana four four haster that makes a guy falter, that's nothing to scuff at. So I kind of like this guy more than I would, would like the other internal cards. So 2.5 for me, and we'll see how good that mechanic actually turns out to be. Next up. Fervent Pain Caster. Two in a red gets you a Human Wizard at Uncommons, 3-1. You can tap it to deal a damage to target player, or exert it to deal one damage to target creature. I will tell you right now what I'm going to do with this card. Shoot your face over and 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 over until you're dead. Yeah, I gave this guy, uh, I like this thing a lot. 2.25, it's good filler. And the body's not terrible either. 3-1, that'll get you there. Moving on, Firebrand Archer with one in a red. It is a common human archer, 2-1. When you recast a non-creature spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. Cool. Uh, again, blue-red spells deck might want this in some pro in some capacity, uh, but as it is, it's just pretty mediocre filler. 2.25 for me. Next, Frontline Devastator. Three and a red for a zombie minotaur warrior, common. Three, three, afflict two, and you can pay one and a red to give it bad fire breathing, plus one, plus zero. So that's not terrible, actually. Uh, three, four mana, three threes, that's hill giant stats right there. With upside, I'm on board with this card. I like it a lot. 2.25, almost at 2.5. Um, bad fire breathing is bad fire breathing, and that's why I have to knock it a little bit. But still, good, solid filler. Next up, Gilded Cerodon. I like his head thing. Four in a red gets you a creature beast common. Whenever it attacks, if you control a desert or there's a desert in your graveyard, target creature can't block this turn, and it's also a 4-4. Four, four. This thing's pretty beastly, and a 5-mana 4-4 four, four is nothing to scoff at, and just having that added bonus to start picking off the bigger, the, like, make their bigger creatures unable to block and force their smaller ones to block, that's pretty good. So I gave Gilded Ceradon a 2.25. Little costly for what it does, but it's good fill all the same. Next up, we have got Granitic Titan. Four red red gets you an elemental at common. Five, four minutes cycling to... Cool. 2.25, just generic good beater. Minutes is always powerful. Next up, Hazaret's Undying Fury. So if you thought the cycle was good so far... This whole, you know, doesn't untap, lands out untapped during your next untap step. We're good. Wizards is just like, here's the rug. Whoop! And just pulled it out from underneath the red mages of the world. Because this card is trash. Four red red. Sorcery. Shuffle your library. So you can't even set this effect up. Then exile the top four cards. You may cast any number of non-land cards with converted mana cost five or less from among them without paying their mana costs, lands you control don't untap during your next untap step. Without any way to set this up, I, there's no, you can't brainstorm do anything like that. Your deck has to be built in a very specific way and then to hit six mana and pray that you hit something relevant off the top of your library. I mean, anything less than three mana probably won't do a damn. You want to hit a bunch of five drops like with this card. This is just trash. It is a one. This Don't play this card, people. Damn. Now, that being said, Wizards did throw us a bone with Hour of Devastation. They said the thing. They said the thing. Three red red to a sorcery at rare. All creatures lose indestructible until the end of turn. So those horses from your uh, Crestmare? Yeah. <laughs> Hour of Devastation deals 
five damage to each creature and each non bolus planeswalker. Wow. I mean, just talk about the equalizer. Gideon, gone. Nissa, gone. Uh, Moliana, gone. Like every planeswalker, unless they've been on the board for a very long time and have been just unchecked they will fall to this immediately. And most creatures in the format, like we're talking standard now here, people. This is going to be a defining card in blue-red control. This kills everything. And again, combo with Soul's Card Mage for fun. Uh, I gave this a four because this is the absolute just end-all, be-all equalizer in the format. It just finishes everything. It's so cool. And the art on it is just ugh, super evocative. They said the thing, yeah. And from that, we move on to another crappy red card. Imminent Doom. Two and a red enchantment at rare. Enters a battlefield with a Doom counter on it. Other things that have Doom counters. Uh, I can't think of any. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, convert a mana cost equal to the number of Doom counters on Imminent Doom. Imminent Doom deals that much damage to target creature or player, then put a Doom counter on Imminent Doom. Jesus. <laughs> Gotta cast a one, then a two, then a three, then a four, then a... You, you see how bad this card actually is. Do not play this card ever. This gets a one for me. Next up, we have Inferno Jet. Five and a red gets to a sorcery at uncommon that deals six damage to target opponent. Cycles for two... I don't like this either. Like, this is a solid two for me. It is borderline trash filler. But there are some decks that will want this effect. They get down to those last couple life points. The board has stalled out. And sometimes you just need a light, a, a, a lava axe to the face. That's sometimes all you need, which is just fine. And there's actually a gold card that I just realized make this, makes this thing much better. We'll get to that eventually, but it's here. Um, so there is some upside to this card. I'm going to bump it just a tiny bit from up from a two. So we'll see about this one. Next up, Kenra Scrapper. Two and a red, two, three, Jackal Warrior at common with Menace. When you, and you can exert it when it attacks. And if you do, it gets plus two, plus zero till the end of turn. Cool. Uh, yeah, I give us a 2.25 for just being good. Generic red beat down filler. Next up. Kindled Fury. One red instant will get you a common that gives target creature plus one zero and first strike until the end of turn. Again, if you blow out your opponent with this, congratulations. They walked into it. And if you walk into this yourself, you're the worst player ever. Know this is coming, people. Come on. Know the tricks. That's all I'm going to say. Um, as it stands, though, it's a good trick. 2.25 for me. First strike ain't nothing, to, uh, ain't nothing to laugh at. So go for it. Next up, Mag... Magmaroth? It's like a Power Rangers villain or something like that. I am Magmaroth. Ah! Three and a red gets you in an elemental at uncommon. It's a 5-5. Five, five. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a minus one, minus one counter on Magmaroth. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may remove a minus one, minus one counter from Magmaroth. Again, blue-red spells deck kind of likes this guy. Obviously, the first one attacks, it's a 4-4 four, four, and a 3-3. Three, three. You can do the math. But as soon as you like fire off of, you know, any spell, yeah. This thing gets real, real quick. It's not as good as our next guy, though. Manticore Eternal. This thing is nuts. Three red red. Zombie Manticore at Uncommon. It's a 5-4 the flicked three, and it attacks each combat if able. There will be a point in the game where this thing will end the game by itself. They're going to have to block it eventually, or they just let it go through a million times. This is a four-turn clock right here, people. Or they're taking three constantly and there aren't a whole lot of creatures that are unassisted at least you know pump spells and whatnot that can tangle with this thing this thing is nuts 2.5 for me i like it a lot next up we've got neheb the eternal we uh, saw him as a red green or red uh, red black uh, minotaur guy in uh alan cat now he's back he's been uh, eternalized um, three red red gets you a legendary creature, zombie minotaur warrior. They actually had to shrink the type line on this guy to fit all that in there, which is hilarious to me. For a red mythic, you get a four six with a flicked three, so good already. At the beginning of your post combat main phase, yeah, that's right, people. There's a post combat main phase. Main phase two is your friend. 
um, add a single red mana to your mana pool for each one life your opponent has lost this turn. So that's burn spells, combat damage, anything you can do to make them lose life, you can possibly get through. So on its own, it's either four or three, and that's pretty insane. And the jump from three to eight, or I'm sorry, five to eight or five to nine mana on turn six is pretty insane. You can cast a lot of stuff on that. Um, I don't know what you're doing with this mana. Is this good for standard? I don't know. But the art's cool. He's really cool. Uh, and he's powerful. So yeah, I gave uh, Neheb uh, 3.5 for just being absolutely bonkers and hard to deal with. Next up, Open Fire Wizards. What the hell? Two and a red instant deals three damage to target creature or player. Think back with me, people. To the days of M10. And there was a great spell in that set. For a single red mana, you got a three damage to the creature or the face. That card was Lightning Bolt. It is one of the most played... Oh, it was one of the most played, card, played, played cards in Modern. It sees play in Legacy. It sees play in Vintage. And now we have this shit. We had two mana bolts. Those are fine. I get it. Lightning Strike is probably about as good as this card needs to be. But three mana? Jesus. I mean, take it because it's good. It's good filler removal. But three mana? Come on. Not good. Not good. Next up, Puncturing Blow. Two red red for a sorcery at common. Puncturing Blow deals five damage to target creature. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Now, it's interesting to note that the god is one of the one of the one of um Nicobolus's gods is in this art. And I need to I have to recheck their stats, but this kills a lot of things in the format, including some very difficult to deal with mythic creatures. So take that as you will. I like this a whole lot. Four mana is a lot in red. But it kills stuff good. 2.5 for me. Next up, we've got Sand Strangler. 3 in a red gets you a beast at uncommon, 3-3. Three, three. If you control a desert or there's a desert in your graveyard when it enters the battlefield, it deals 3 damage to target creature. So 4 mana with a little bit of setup for a bolt to the creature. Done. Uh, 2.25 for me. This is really solid filler, I think. I, I like it a lot. Next up, Thorned Moloch. 2 in a red gets you a 2-2 two, two common lizard. Look at the art on this thing. This thing is monstrously huge. That's a little dude under his under his claw, his foot. Uh, prowess, so you know what that does. And as long as it's attacking, it has first strike. Wowzers. In the right deck, this thing gets nuts. 2.25 for me. Solid, solid filler. I like it a lot. Wildfire, fire, wi wow. Wildfire Eternal is our last red card. For three in red, it gets you a Zombie Jackal Cleric at rare. One for Afflict Four. Yeah, that's insane. Whenever it attacks and isn't blocked, you may cast an instant or sorcery from your hand without paying its mana cost. So your opponent it makes a very difficult decision. Do I take one and get blown out, or do I just take four? I give it a three. This probably might be like my one of my favorite red cards in the entire set. Like, holy cow, this card's nuts. Super good. So, that is the red cards. Also the black cards. Um, we'll be moving on to the green artifact land golds and invocations here momentarily. So stick around for that for me, guys. Um, as always, if you have, you know, if you disagree with me or you agree with me, just want to let me know in the comments, you know, hey, you got this card right or no, you could not be more wrong about this card. Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the videos. Check us out over on Facebook at the EOT Newsflash. Find us on Twitter at the EOT Newsflash. Find us on the internet mail. Um, eotnewsflash at gmail.com. Send all your love, hate, and respect. And check us out every week over on the MTG cast for fun, insightful magic commentary. Yep, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> so yeah, these are the red and black cards. Go and check out the blue and the whites. And we'll be back very, very shortly with our red, or the gold, the green, artifact, lands, and invocations. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you soon.